it seemed that there was a band on every corner in Lewiston as I grew up. Uh, everybody I knew was playing guitar or drums or horns or something, but uh, I w there was quite a group of guitar players, and I would bounce from one friend to another, uh, learning different licks, different chord patterns. When we started, we wanted to just play the regular commercial pop music that was accepted wide and far. And uh, as we grew a little older, we wanted to become more defined and attempt harder music. But also we got into a blues realm and a psychedelic realm where we really played loud and uh, heavy volume music and also a lot of uh, feedback sound and tried to give kind of a, well, just a heavy, crazy rock sound that not everybody was projecting at that time. So we did try to get to a psych psychedelic point. You were Terry of Terry and the Telstars. I know there was some confusion about that. One would expect that to some degree you were not just the founder of the band, but the leader of the band. I mean, did you, did you provide some element of leadership uh, to the band and to the type, type of music that you guys played? I, I brought the band together and then we, I wanted the band to be very democratic. So we always put it to a vote. There was no one person that could control. I didn't want to control and I didn't want anybody else to control. So it was always a democratic vote for songs, uh, for image, styling of clothing. You know, we, you know, we wanted to look sharp and we did. We dressed well back then, but a lot of the bands all dressed alike and we just wanted to keep up that clean image as well <laughs> and sharp looking image of the band image. Uh, you knew we were a part of a band when you saw our, our uniforms. And Once Terry and Telstars got on a roll, we played just about every venue that was uh, going, we played the Roller Drome, we played the Pal Hop, we played the Old Orchard Beach Pier. We actually opened for several bands, uh, Blues Magoos, and we opened for Tommy James and the Shondells at the arena. Well, we opened for Jimi Hendrix in uh, March of 1968. That was a, a thrill thrill of a lifetime for me to see one of the greatest guitar players ever. Playing at the Pal Hop with the Tall Stars, I had the connection with Herb Genro and we'd go see him. He was the chief of police at uh, Lewiston and he also booked the bands and he had a number of jobs. He wore a lot of hats and he said, well, I hope you have a band that'll rock the place and we'll give you a try. and." We got in, and the, as I recall, that was a good band from the first night we played the Pal Hop. We had a good response from the crowd, and we were asked back several times. We kept going back and became part of the group, uh, cor the chorale that came back several times. We kind of fit in with the Royal Knights and the Moon Dogs and the Recons, and we were all rotators at the Pal Hop, but we were the second coming. We weren't the early birds at the Pal Hop. We were like second shift. <laughs> Younger generation. Younger generation, if you if you will, yeah. You're at the Pal Hop. You're on the stage. You're looking out. What do you What are you seeing from the stage? L looking out from the stage of the Pal Hop, there was people, crowds on the floor and you couldn't see any too, too many gaps. It was just a mass of people. And when they danced, the floor actually moved. And also there was people in the balcony. That, so you look up and you'd see people all around on a real good night. It was a packed house. It was quite a thrill. The Pal Hop 
was an experience. And the more often you went to this experience, the more you grew, you learned to interact with people, you saw musical acts that enlightened you. It was, there was a lot going on and it, it just was a growing experience. Every week you learn something new. <laughs> yes, I remember the Pal Hop days. They were fantastic. I was very young when I started going and I wasn't in a band. I was just learning guitar and I went to the Pal Hop with a sports buddy of mine and started seeing all these young women running around and thought, these guys are playing and they're attracting the women. This is a good way to get women to notice me. So like other people, other musicians, uh, it was a way to be noticed by playing. So getting in a band was uh, the next step and I wanted to be noticed by the girls and so. So the Pal Hop was life changing for you personally? The Pal Hop was life changing for me, absolutely. It was a growing experience. I feel like I grew up at the Pal Hop. And 46 years later, the crowd remembered Terry and the Hell Stars. Terry and the Hell Stars were remembered. It was sweet. <laughs> My musical road has been a long and winding one, to, to use a phrase, borrow a phrase. Uh, but it coming back to this group, it was just a thrill for me to, to perform with my old bandmates. Anything you wish you'd done differently over the years, musically? Hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin and I don't think uh, I'm a working guy you know don't give up the day job but I'm a rocker at night and I don't have to deal with all the frills that go along with the rock and roll life there's, there's a lot to it and just to leave it as a sideline uh, seems to be sufficient for me uh, i have a lot of fun doing it but i don't know that i'd want to be running the roads and performing all over the united states or different countries or what have you i enjoy doing what i'm doing now uh, so i'm pretty cool with all of it